So why don't you think the schools teach people about business and finance? That's a good question. I don't know. I think something's broken with the education system. Because we are so driven by what the university, every level, junior high people are worried about what the high school requires. High school's worried about what the university requires. You know, it's just that whole cycle that goes on. You know, we don't let kids get a driver's license without taking driver's education in this country. You know, we want to make sure behind, before you get behind the wheel of a car that you understand what you're doing. But we'll hand you a checkbook, a savings account, and a credit card, and good luck with that. Most people learn about money the hard way, right? That's what happened to me. I, you know, grew up in foster care. Uh, no one ever talked to me about money, so what happens? I get a checkbook, sweet. You know, I want that, I want that, I don't care how I'm going to pay for it. Because young people need to know this. We know we need to know it. We, there are tools online, they're not easy to use, they're not easy, they're, you know, they could be easier to, to digest. Uh, the stuff in our schools is very difficult and outdated, and that needs to be fixed as well. I think the most important class that you will take in your collegiate career is a class on personal finance. Regardless of your major, regardless of what college you're enrolled in. Well, the reality is, you know, I did everything right academically and everything wrong financially. Um, in government and in organizations like ours that try to influence government, they respond to the squeaky wheel. And financial literacy really doesn't have a constituency that is that squeaky wheel that says, I need attention. It's a constant nagging, it's a constant strain um, that sucks away energy. And sometimes you're conscious of it, sometimes you're not. But I know even the girls can sense, I have two little girls, two and four, when I am coming from that place of just fear and stress because of our financial situation. My wife and I decided that we, we look forward 15, 20 years and we want to see what are our kids going to look like and what, what ability are they going to have to make good decisions. And it's the things that we expose them to now which are going to help them make the decisions later in life. And people are dro dropping credit cards and they're getting huge debts, personal debts, buying things that they don't need, but they feel a desire to. They feel like that's the way I'm supposed to live. They, you, we have a celebrity culture that's consistent. How many Hollywood access shows do we have? Change takes time. I, th I think there is a I think only recently, and by that I mean I think only in the last several months since this economic crisis began have people started to realize that house prices don't go to the sky, that you actually do have to pay debts that you borrow, and there's just, there's this, there was almost this mythical hope that things would just work out. You have to go to the policy board for education, wherever that policy has been for it. In this country, in the state of Colorado, which I represent in the U.S. Senate, it starts at the school board level. They have a set way of doing a set thing and there ain't no way in the world they're going to change it. And that's the attitude that you're confronted with day in and day out whenever you want to go in and say, I got an idea. If they really care about America and that they want their children, the next generation, to make an impact and help us go through these difficult times, now is the time to start.